Today we're going to show you how to replace tie rod ends. Right now you see a box in front of you of new old stock tie rod ends. We happen to get off of eBay. If you know which tie rod ends you need visually, you can usually find the right ones online with a little bit of searching. Now of course there are other places to get them, but as we said these came from eBay. What we're going to do is open the box here and show you what a tie rod end actually looks like. And there is a new old stock tie rod end. And in this case, we're going to do the whole demonstration showing you how to do this on a 1939 Gram Model 97. But any vehicle that uses tie rod ends is going to be essentially the same. The end might look a little bit different, but the process is going to be the same. One of the first things to know is that there is a right and there is a left version of this. The threads are the opposite direction on the two tie rod ends. One's for the driver's side, one's for the passenger side. Down here is our tie rod end. Obviously here is our brake drum. We've previously pulled each of the bolts out, taking the wheel off, wheels sitting over here, bolts sitting down here. Now the thing to know here is how did we figure out it was bad? When the wheel was still mounted, we could take the wheel and we could shake it side to side and we could find out that there was movement down here in the joint. But when we take it apart, we'll show you how with the joint we can tell that it's bad at that point also. Right here I have a shop rag. Other people can do what they want. I put kerosene on the shop rack so I can wipe stuff off. It works really well. So we're going to take this particular nut off the top. I've already pulled the cotter pin out of it. They have a cotter pin. So when you tighten these up, you got to remember to line up the castle nut so you can put a cotter pin in it. Cotter pin's out. Now I'm going to snake the impact wrench in here. Obviously, I wouldn't normally do it that way. That's so that you all can see what I'm doing. Okay, nuts off. Now, this is a tapered shaft going into your tie rod in, into a tapered fitting. You really don't want to beat these things apart. You actually want to use a tie rod in puller to pop that out. And we're going to show you that in just a moment. Here we have a power built kit number three, five piece front end service set. Model 648626. Now, obviously, you could get a different front end service set, but this one happens to have what we need. So, we'll open it up, turn it around, and show you what we're after. Here, you have your entire set of tools for front end service, but this is a tie rod end puller right here. That's the one we're going to use. We're going to use this device to actually go pull the tie rod. All right, with your tie rod end puller, you're going to just take two little feet, you're going to set them under the little knuckle here where the tie rod's fastened into. You're going to set this little portion over the threads. And in this case, since I've actually already undone this once, this is not tight. But I'm going to show you how it's set up. So this is how you're going to set it up just like I'm holding it and bring it down tight like that and you see I can pop this out because I already loosened it so I just popped it out what's actually going to happen when you do it is when it's going to be tight you're going to have to use your impact gun on the top there and it's going to do the same thing and the impact gun on forward is going to press down on that top there and it's going to pull up on this and popping it out. But as I said, I've already loosened this once, taken it out, so it's undone. So you can see how that would actually work. So this one has a rubber cap. Take the rubber cap off. And what we're going to do is wiggle this back and forth. You probably can't hear what I can hear, but this you, you see it's supposed to rotate a little bit. But it actually makes a little clicky noise and you can feel this it's not rotating but it's still moving and it's not supposed to do that it should be 
so it just rotates. It shouldn't actually tip back and forth like this. When we had the wheel on, you would see that as a large movement back and forth. Down here, this teeny little movement when I rock it is causing a large movement in our tire. So that tells us our tie rod end is bad. So we have taken off one side. I'm going to take off the other side and not show you that. It's the exact same process. I'm just going to remove the other side and take this entire tie rod out of the car. Now something to remember is the grease fittings are towards the rear. That tells me the passenger side is here. Driver's side will also be towards the rear. That way I'll know which side is actually which, and I won't put it on backwards because, yeah, you could actually install this backwards, and you don't want to do that. You want to install it the correct way. So the grease fittings go to the rear on this car. All right, I'm going to take my kerosene rag here, and you notice I'm wiping down the entire rod here that the tie rods are mounted in, one on each end. Now we're going to take this whole piece off, so we don't care too much about that. I was just wiping this down to get some of the grease, etc., off of it. Now you'll notice on the ends of these, they have bolts and a metal collar. That's causing the tie rod end to be impossible to move in and out right now. So we're actually going to have to loosen this in order to screw the tie rod end out or in. In this case, we're going to take it all the way out. We're going to do that on both ends. Now before we do that, one of the big things we're going to do is we're going to measure. We're going to get the exact distance from here to here because we're going to endeavor to put this back together exactly the way it was. The car was in alignment, it's already been to an alignment shop, and we're going to try to put this back identical. Now even if we could put it back identical, we could be just a touch off and might have to have the car realigned, but we're going to try real hard to get this right. So we're going to measure that point. Here we have a ruler that we can measure with. We're going to put it right to the tie rod housing, and I'm going to try to turn this so we can all look at it. And it looks like we're at 7 eighths plus, I'd say right at 7 eighths. We're right at 7 eighths, so we're going to use 7 eighths as a measurement. Now, as I told you before, this is the passenger side. This is one that we know is absolutely bad. And passenger side because the fitting for the grease is towards the rear. The driver's side, the fitting for the grease is also towards the rear. So we're remembering this is the rear, therefore this is the passenger, the opposite end being the driver's side. We have half inch bolt here, so we've got a half inch wrench, and we've got a half inch ratchet, and we're going to loosen this up so we can take the tie rod and out. Alright, so we're loose. Now our tie rod end will screw in or out depending on which end we're on. Because as I said, one's right hand thread, one's left hand thread. As you can see, we're getting this to screw out. It's out. Here we have Prep All by Clean, Clean Strip. It's a wax and grease remover. Obviously, I had really greasy gloves before, and even with kerosene, you're going to leave oil on everything. So, we're going to wipe off our new tie rod end here. The reason we're going to do that is I'm going to paint it. A lot of people throw things on like this and they just leave them raw and not care. Well, I'm going to paint it black, preserve it a little better. Get it all cleaned off here. You see all the grease that it takes off with the pre cleaner. This is what we'd actually use if we were going to paint something. So we're going to paint it. So why aren't we going to use it? We're going to get this area cleaned up well. Use it on the gloves, even. So we're set. And we may do some more afterwards. Now, the little bits of Lots of my got off of that towel don't matter. At the moment, most of that's going to be in here anyway. So now we've got to get our tie rod end going in. And the real trick is to figure out which way you got to spin it, because as I said, one's right-hand thread, one's left-hand thread. 
So we got it going in. I'm gonna put it in all the way. We're gonna put a little WD-40 on here. We'll have to clean up from it, but the reason we're gonna use it is it's a little bit stiff. And since it's still going to be a little stiff, we're going to move to a vise. We are almost there compared to it. So we're getting there. Okay, okay let's take it out of there. Now we're going to tighten it back up since we've got basically our 7 8 Now remember I said you're going to try to put this back as close as possible. You can't guarantee the tie rod ends are absolutely identical, so you'll probably have to have the bar aligned when you're done anyway. But we're going to try to get it as close as we can get it. So we've got the 7 8 done here. Now we're going to have to clean this up some more in order to paint it, but we've got it basically done for that end. We're going to do the same thing on the opposite end, and I won't bore you with that. We'll be back in a bit. Continue cleaning this up. Now we're going to take a little bit of blue tape, and we're going to wrap the end up here, because we don't want to put paint on our sloped surface. We don't care so much about the threads because we do want to paint the end, but don't really want to paint that sloped surface. So we're going to just tape it up there so we can paint it. And we're just going to give this a quick little coat of black paint. If you have one end done, we're going to do the same process and do the opposite end, and we'll do that off camera. All right, here we have a grease fitting storehouse. This came from Harbor Freight. This type of item you can get at Harbor Freight that's decent. And we're going to find out what size grease fitting fits in here. Let's see if this little. I've got to be right. So we have it started, and we'll go in and tighten it up. Looks like it's a little off of our 7 sixteenths, just a teeny, but it'll work. And we'll obviously grease it after we put it on. It's a whole lot easier to put the fittings on now than it is later. I want them in nice and tight. There, that one's fit. We'll do the other one off camera. Here we have the rubber covers from the other tie rods. And I actually like these better than what's furnished with this set because they'll actually seal it up a little better. So what I'm going to do is clean these off with a little bit of the pre-cleaner and I'm just going to reuse them. All right, these have been cleaned with pre-cleaner and a little bit of kerosene. I think these will seal up a lot nicer. Really what these are are dust covers. And then the set with this particular brand of tie rods, 
tie rod ends, I don't think will actually seal as nice as these older rubber ones that we're going to put back on the car. Here we have our finished tie rod assembly. I'm going to put it across the car. Remember, we had to have our grease fittings to the rear. So we've got our grease fittings to the rear. Here's the dust cap we're going to reuse. That's the rubber one that we had on here in the first place that we cleaned up. And we're going to get lined up through our hole. We have our nut. These two tie rods ends are made by different companies. Everything's the same except they use different size nuts. So I had to use the nuts with the new tie rods. Couldn't reuse the nuts I had. So I'm going to get a socket and we're going to tighten that up with an impact gun. Alright, I've got it in here a funny way so you can see what I'm doing. And it's tightened up, but what you also have to do is you have to line up your hole so you can eventually put your cotter pin in. So you may have to go back and work on this with a hand wrench and line up the hole with one of the slots in your castle nut and insert your cotter pin into the castle nut. The one other thing you have to do is that grease fitting over there, grease it, and when you grease it with chassis grease, put enough grease in it so it starts to come out a little bit under the dust cover and then wipe it off with a kerosene rag and everything is finished. Same thing would be done on the opposite side and you'd be done installing these. The only other thing is I said you might have to go have the car realigned because even though you've done the best you can to get the same length, the alignment could be slightly different because you might not have it perfect. So you may want to have your alignment checked. But that in general is the way you do tie rod ends on any vehicle that's equipped with them.